Hi guys and welcome to your first video lesson on past forms. So today we're going to be looking at the past simple and the past continuous. Um, and just to let you know, um, a small warning for you, the way that I'm going to present this grammar today is a little bit different to anything that you may have read in books or course books or grammar books, okay? So some of these ideas might be a little bit new or a little bit different, um, but we, we can talk about them in the group. So in general, talking about the past in English can be quite challenging. So over the next four weeks, I'll be sharing some information with you about this area of English and a particular emphasis on how important perception is when choosing which form to use. Now, if you don't know this word, perception, please don't stop the video to look in your dictionary right now or to check on Google, because I'm going to give you a definition on the next slide. So just bear with me for now, okay? Uh, so yeah, today, past simple and past continuous. Next week, past simple and past perfect. The week of the 15th, we're going to miss a week as I will be away for a few days and I actually, believe it or not, won't have internet access. Uh, on the 22nd of May, we're going to look at used to and would for past habits. And on the 29th, we'll finish by talking about other uses of past forms, including politeness and, <coughs> excuse me, hypothesizing. So let's look at that word perception. So two questions to think about. What is perception? And why is perception so important when we talk about English verbs? So the Collins Dictionary tells us that your perception of something is the way that you think about it or the impression you have of it. So in other words, it's how you understand a situation. And to give you an example, um, imagine two people in a really big city. So it could be London, it could be Milan, it could be Tokyo. And maybe one of these people loves this city. And they say something like, wow, all these people, all these art galleries and restaurants, this is an amazing place. I love this place. And the other person says, Oh my God, all these people, all this noise, this is horrible, I hate this place. So these two people, they have a different perception of the city that they're in. And this is really important when we talk about English verbs. So there are rules with English verbs, obviously. However, we can often choose which form to use depending on how we perceive or understand the situation that we're talking about. So let's start by looking at the past simple. So the past simple talks about a past time or action and this time or action is finished and complete. So just to let you know, these green X's are now, so this is present time, uh, and Jackie ate the cake. Okay, it's finished. There's no more cake for us to eat. Uh, we can use the past simple for sequencing events, and this is a really important thing to remember, particularly for next time when we look at the difference with past simple and past perfect. So Jackie ate the cake, and then she drank some tea. So that's one, two. Past simple also really expresses past facts as perceived by the speaker. So this sentence here, and this is true for me, I lived in China for three years. So this is fine. This is a finished thing. This is now. I'm not in China anymore. Let's look at the past continuous a little bit. So. Past continuous also talks about a past time or action, but now these actions happen in an extended period of time. So if you look at this cake, it's got quite a bit longer than the cake on the slide before, 
this is the extended period of time. So Jackie was eating the cake. Past continuous often emphasizes the duration of an event and duration means length of time. Okay, so Jackie was eating her cake so slowly that her tea got cold. And one little important difference is that we can't use the past continuous for sequencing events. So you can't do this one, two, thing like you can with the past simple. So Jackie was eating her cake, then she was drinking her tea. Nah, it's not really possible. All right, so now let's start comparing these two forms then, okay? So as we said, past, past simple sequencing events, one, two, that's no problem. What about then when we start to have one past continuous event and one past simple event? So in this situation here, we've got Jackie was eating the cake as I came into the room. And now we come back to this word perceive and now it starts to become important. The past continuous is perceived as the longer event and it contains this shorter event. So in the head of the speaker, in the mind of the speaker, this green event, the cake, is, is longer. And me coming into the room, this is a short event. Now we can also have two past continuous events and in this situation the two events are seen or perceived as having equal duration. So Jackie was eating the cake as I was coming into the room. Okay. Now here's a little thing that you might come across in grammar books or course books stuff like that or perhaps on the internet um, people often say and I have said this in the past many times that the past continuous is taught as a long action that is interrupted by a short action so you often find sentences like Alex was having a bath when the phone rang. So the idea is you have this long action and something short happens in the middle of it. And this is okay. There's, there's no problem with this. But the question is, who chooses which event is long or short? Now, we had the sentence before. Let's just find it for you guys. Uh, Jackie was eating the cake as I came into the room. So this is the perceived long event. This is the short event. And now we have it the other way around. Jackie ate the cake quickly as I was coming into the room. So both sentences are okay. This is the important point. It depends on the speaker's perception of long and short. So the speaker's choice of verb form does not depend on real time. Instead, it depends on the speaker's perception of time. If the speaker wants to emphasize duration of an event, they're likely to choose the past continuous. If the speaker wants to emphasize uh, or express a completed past fact, they're likely to choose the past simple. And then going back to these long and short events, you know, sometimes we do want to talk about two past events where one event is contained. So if you contain something, you kind of put it around, uh, if something is contained, something else is, is going around it. So sometimes we have a situation where one event is contained by the other. And this is when the standard course books talk about long and short events. But it's important to remember 
that the length of an event depends on the speaker's perception rather than clock time. Okay, so this is the same sentence again. Jackie was eating the cake as I came into the room. All right, and just finally then, just to make another little contrast, at the beginning of the PowerPoint, I showed you this sentence. I lived in China for three years. Now, if I say this sentence in my head, in my mind, I see three years as one single finished event. It doesn't matter if it's three days, three years, 30 years. This is one single finished thing. I can say this. I was living in China for three years. That's okay. There's no problem there. But here, this is now a period of time in my head. Okay. So let's give you guys a quick summary. Past simple talks about completed past events. These events are perceived as being facts by the speaker. And it doesn't matter it, how long the event was in terms of clock time. What matters is how the speaker feels about this event. Past continuous also talks about completed past events. These events are perceived as having an extended duration of time. One event can contain another event if the speaker feels one event was longer than the other. And again, just one more quick example. I waited for you. You didn't come. That's okay. Compare it to, I was waiting for you for a really long time. Where were you? Okay, finished event, expressing the duration. All right, guys, so that's a slightly different interpretation of the past simple and past continuous. And I would really, really love to know what you guys think about that. So over the weekend, uh, I'm going to be in the Facebook group for a Q&A session. So if you have any questions or any comments or any thoughts about this language or about other language too, if you, if you have some questions, please send me a message on Facebook or you can put your comments and questions into the group. And if enough people ask me some questions, I can collect them all together and answer them for you over the weekend. And just one final thing is that this weekend actually is a public holiday in the UK. So I've got a few things going on. I haven't quite got a clear time yet for this weekend Q&A, but I will let you know as soon as my plans are ready. And um, I would love to know what you guys think. Okay, take care.